Okay, so you've just looked at the cranial nerves. You understand that there's 12 of them. You understand there's different modalities in each one. And you understand that some of the nerves are mixed. Some of them are pure, uh, have different uh, proportions of these modalities. So the question is, how do you organize all of that information? How do you study that information? So what I recommend is taking a blank sheet of paper, or if you have a whiteboard, grab a whiteboard uh, and get a marker. What we're going to do is we're going to draw the brain stem to start off with. So here on this side, we got the midbrain, the pons, and then the medulla coming out. Now, at the top of this sheet, what we need to do is start off by picking one of the modalities. So to be easy on myself, I'm going to pick GSAs. Now, which cranial nerves have GSAs in them? So we're thinking, we're thinking that's cranial nerves five, and we remember that uh, cranial nerve seven has some, as well as nine and ten. So we're going to draw the GSAs of five, seven, nine, and ten. So what does cranial nerve 5 look like? Cranial nerve 5 is trigeminal. So it has a branch coming out, uh, you know, about uh, this region here, and it forms its uh, ganglion with its trigeminal structure. So we have one branch coming up here, another branch heading down this way, and another branch descending into the cheek region. <clears throat> Cranial nerve 7. Facial nerve. It's got this uh, nice little branch coming out uh, in this region right about here. Uh, so it's got this foramen it goes through. So this one has, so trigeminal also has its uh, foramina through which it's traveling. So let's draw those in. We need to get all of this information out on this sheet. Uh, so facial nerve heads into the facial canal. Boom. Got that. And now we have what's left. We have 9 and 10. So 9 and 10 kind of come out together. Boom. Boom. They both have a superior ganglion. They travel through a foramen and they both have an inferior ganglion. So now let's take our blue sensory marker because sensory is always blue, right? <clears throat> so the uh, GSAs where are they located in trigeminal nerve? Their cell bodies are located in the trigeminal ganglion. There's hundreds of them in there, maybe thousands. We've drawn three. Where are their central processes going? Their central processes are traveling centrally, and they synapse. centrally on uh, the uh, trigeminal sensory nuclei. So we remember the shape of these nuclei. Boom. So that's going to synapse on these bottom two. So there's going to be synapses going all up and down depending on which uh, neuron we pick. So these are all just synapsing right there. That's fine. Peripherally. Where did these peripheral processes travel? Well, one of these is going through the V1 division to synapse on the forehead. So here I'm going to draw a little dermatome map. There. That's a guy's face, in case you didn't know. So this is going to synapse here in the forehead. So this is V1, the ophthalmic division. It travels through what foramen? Superior orbital fissure. Now we're going to do V2. 
its peripheral processes travel through foramen rotundum. And it's going to do the cheek region of this little dermatome map. So we got that one. Now this one traveling through foramen ovale, and it does the mandibular region. Great. <clears throat> now, uh, so we've done trigeminal. Now we're, we've got to do facial. So the cell bodies located in geniculate ganglion. So when you're doing this, label all of these things. Do it from scratch like I'm doing it. Don't stare at your notes because this is how you test your memory and how you reinforce your memory. So the central process of the GSAs in geniculate ganglion travel centrally, uh, enter the uh, cranial vault through the internal auditory meatus. Travel centrally and their GSAs to the ear so they synapse on the trigeminal sensory nucleus, uh, nuclei. Uh, so here I'm having it synapse on the mesencephalic, um, or uh, sorry, the, the, um, the spinal uh, trigeminal nucleus. Mesencephalic is up here. So uh, its peripheral process heads out through stylomastoid foramen, curves back up, and heads to the ear. So this is not realistic. It's actually going to curve um, like this and go straight to the oracle of the ear. So it's actually going to synapse on the oracle of the ear there. Now we have uh, 9 and 10. So the GSAs for 9, uh, you know, and, and 10, they're getting a little bit more complex. Where do they go? So in nine, so first off, the nucleus is in the superior, I mean, not the nucleus, the, um, the cell body is in the superior ganglion. Central process heads back up here, boom, going to the uh, spinal uh, trigeminal nucleus. It's peripheral process, so depending on which uh, neuron we depict, it can be going to any number of locations. It goes through the jugular foramen, and then some of these uh, cranial nerve 9 GSAs go to the uh, pharynx. Some of them go to the auditory tube. Some of them go to the inner wall of the tympanic membrane. So how do I depict that? Um, auditory tube. Here's the auditory tube. Here is the middle ear cavity with the tympanic membrane there. And we've got some uh, the um, the incus malleus stapes, uh, etc. There. So here we're synapsing on all of that, and here's the pharynx going down uh, down the throat. So there's the auditory tube, pharynx, middle ear cavity. <clears throat> so again, <clears throat> moving on to vagus, we have GSAs in the superior ganglion. Central process. Again, synapses on trigeminal nuclei. Uh, heads out peripherally through jugular foramen, and it is going to innervate the external auditory meatus of the ear. So that's GSAs. That's the kind of thing you need to do in order to study this material. So let's wipe this clean, and we'll do another quick one. So let's do SVEs. So let's take a look at these SVEs. We will draw again the spinal cord. And what has SVEs coming out of it? Well, first we have trigeminal. Trigeminal. It's got three portions to it. But... The SVEs only come from one area. So where are the lower motor neurons for trigeminal? They are coming from the trigeminal uh, motor nucleus. Well, you know, let's do this in red because red is a nice color for SVEs for motor. So trigeminal uh, motor nucleus, fibers coming out, traveling through the trigeminal ganglion, but not synapsing because they are motor. They travel out of, through the foramen rotundum, and then they synapse on 
the muscles of mastication. Uh, so here's masseter along the jaw. Here's the jaw, boom, masseter. We've also got temporalis attaching to the coronoid process. We've got the medial and lateral pterygoids inside the jaw. We've got um, the uh, other, other muscles uh, innervated. So, you know, name those. Let's put in the foramen, foramen rotundum. What else has um, SVEs? Facial. Let's draw facial nerve coming out like this through the internal auditory meatus to the facial canal, geniculate uh, nucleus, ganglion, sorry, to the vertical portion of the facial canal, and then through the stylomastoid foramen. Let's take a look. So we have the lower motor neurons are located in facial nucleus. They travel through these structures, down, out through uh, the uh, stylomastoid foramen to innervate all of the muscles of facial expression. <clears throat> there we go, a nice smiley face. The muscles of facial expression. Uh, what else has SVEs? Glossopharyngeal and uh, vagus. They create the um, the, uh, glosso, the 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 pharyngeal plexus that innervates the pharyngeal constrictors, stylopharyngeus, uh, those sorts of structures. So again, let's draw uh, these glossopharyngeal and vagus going through the um, jugular foramen. They have their ganglia here, etc., uh, etc. Et And where do their SVE components come from? They come from nucleus ambiguous. And they have some, uh, here's one cell body heading out this way, and it's going to uh, innervate stylopharyngeus muscle. Uh, so that's the styloid process there, and stylopharyngeus going down to the pharyngeal constrictor muscles. So here's the pharynx. Here are the pharyngeal constrictors. Vagus nerve, also originating in nucleus ambiguous. Its fibers travel through the superior and inferior ganglia uh, without synapsing, traveling through jugular foramen, and they are going to innervate the pharyngeal constrictors. <clears throat> They also innervate the larynx. So it has a branch that's going to come down here called the um, recurrent laryngeal nerve. Uh, so we'll learn all about this in due time. Recurrent laryngeal nerve comes down here, goes inside the larynx, um, which is going to be up here, and they innervate the voice box. So here's the Adam's apple. Uh, and they are going inside there to innervate uh, the voice box behind the thyroid uh, uh, cartilage. So this is what you need to do. This is how you need to study. Uh, this is my recommendation anyway, because this allows you to sort through all of this information in the most efficient way. Uh, this is how most anatomists and clinicians uh, typically learn this in uh, due time. Thanks for listening.